Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video is all about a favourite story of mine about the ghost ship, the Mary Celeste. Now, ordinarily, it was just an incident at sea, an abandoned ship. However, the story was made famous by a rather down at heel writer in London uh, who went by the name of Dr. Arthur Conan Doyle. Recognise that name? Well, he wrote this story long before he wrote his series on Sherlock Holmes. He was paid £30 from the Cornhill magazine for what's known as J. Habakkuk Jeffson's Statement. Now, it was published uh, as a journal and it was written as if it was a first-hand account of the Mary Celeste. However, he changed the name to the Marie Celeste. And people actually believe this story was real. So, the ship, the Mary Celeste. She was a two-masted brigantine. She was a cargo ship. She was 100 foot long, 282 tons. And she was bound across the Atlantic carrying a cargo of 1,701 barrels of American raw alcohol. Now, this cargo was worth $35,000, bound for Genoa, where it would be used to fortify the wine. I like that. Now, she was insured by Atlantic Mutual, <laughs> one of the companies that did, in fact, insure the Titanic. And if I understand correctly, they're still in existence to this day. She was registered in New York, and she set sail on the 7th of November, 1872. Now, the crew of seven, uh, you had your Captain Briggs, and the second in command, Albert Richardson, they were both very experienced sailors. So it should have been a straightforward journey across the Atlantic, through the Azores, into the Mediterranean via Gibraltar, up to Genoa. But what went wrong? Now, interestingly, there was a cargo ship, the De Gracia, set sail from New York Harbour on the 15th of November, and it was travelling on a parallel route to the Mary Celeste. Now, it was captained by uh, Captain Morehouse. He knew Captain Briggs on the Mary Celeste. They had, in fact, dined the night before the Mary Celeste set sail. So he knew Captain Briggs, and he knew him to be a good sailor. So just off the coast, well, it's in between the Azores and Portugal, they spot a brigantine and they recognise it as the Mary Celeste. So they signal, and there is no response. They can see the ship is just drifting in the wind, out of control. So the captain decides to send out a small boat to see what's happening on board the Mary Celeste. It was captained by Oliver DeVoe, who was the mate of the Gracia. And what he found on board? Bit of a mystery. When the boarding party arrived, alongside the drifting Mary Celeste. What they found was a, a ship that wasn't in bad condition, but it wasn't in the best condition. What they discover is the crew had left in a hurry. They'd left behind their waterproof, their oilskin boots, but most importantly, they'd left behind their pipes. And I can tell you as a pipe smoker, you don't leave these behind. Also, the last entry on the ship's slate was the 25th of November, as they'd passed St Mary's on the Azores. Now, missing was the ship's chronometer and sextant, also the ship's registration and papers. The compass and clock, the ship's compass and clock had been smashed. All of the cargo was actually intact and secure. We do know that prior to the discovery of the Mary Celeste, she had gone through some terrible storms. But contrary to popular belief, there were no steaming mugs of tea on the table, no half-eaten breakfast, no bloodied sword, and no ship's cat. In fact, the ship had been pretty much just drifting, and the boarding party had observed the ship for about two hours before they actually boarded. Now, there would have been a court of inquiry with regard to the abandonment of the Mary Celeste. And the court records show that the ship had been quite badly knocked about. The galley, for instance, was in a right state. The ship's stove had been knocked out of place. There were utensils strewn all over the galley. Now, the captain's bed was absolutely soaking wet. It talks about the whole place being a wet mess. Now, Charles Lord, who was a, a member on the, the, the De Gracia, 
he uh, gave evidence and he says that the, there was no boats on board. And yet records show that the Mary Celeste was fitted with a lifeboat. Now, Lord also talks about that there were fixings on board uh, the Mary Celeste where the boat should have been. He also mentions about the halyard, a three inch thick rope hanging over the side together with other ropes. This is actual critical evidence and points to what possibly happened aboard the Mary Celeste. Interestingly, a sword was found on board, uh, not covered in blood as the stories go, but it was rusty and it was sheathed. So the crew of the Gracia managed to get the Mary Celeste to the safe harbour in Gibraltar. This was despite one of the pumps being broken on the Mary Celeste. They also discovered that nine of the alcohol barrels on board the Mary Celeste were empty. They had leaked. So what they put together is the idea that with the sound of the broken pump, water sloshing all around, but it was the alcohol from the broken cargo, may have prompted Captain Briggs to believe that the Mary Celeste was actually sinking. Don't forget they're in high seas and terrible winds. So Captain Briggs made the fateful decision to launch the lifeboat. He gathers the sextant, chronometer and the ship's papers and they board the lifeboat but hold on to the ship by that three inch thick rope, the halyard, and wait out the storm. But that rope appears to have snapped, leaving the crew at the mercy of the Atlantic waves. Now, don't forget this is a storm. So those waves are 12, 20 foot high. The fact is Captain Briggs and his crew were never seen again. Now the Mary Celeste, this two-masted brigantine was recovered, repaired and continued in service. It changed hands several times over the next few years, but was finally wrecked in a storm just off Haiti. The owners, by the way, pocketed a handsome sum in the insurance payout. Now, it's just an ordinary story. Ship abandoned. However, due to the story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and others, the legend of the Mary Celeste continues. But I like the old saying, which I've used myself, when you go into a dark, abandoned place, you look around and you say, just like the Mary Celeste did here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little story time with Kevin then. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have a Patreon community. The link is in the description. But before I go, I have some Patreon members here I'd like to mention. I'm going to read them so I don't make a mistake in the names. Andrew Blassett, Pablo Pliskin and Nick Hooper. Hey guys, thanks a million. Bye for now.